Hello, welcome to Unit 5, Lesson 4. Again, I can divide whole numbers. Today we're going to take a look at by interpreting remainders for a variety of problem types by solving two-digit division problems and applying knowledge of remainders. So, as you know, the remainder is the amount left over when a divisor doesn't divide evenly into the dividend. So we have the dividend, how much we have, we have our divisor, how many we're breaking it into, and our quotient is what we get left, what we have, how many groups there are in there. Our remainder is what's left that didn't quite fit into those groups. Well, in real world situations, when we're, multi when we're dividing, that remainder, we have to decide what to do with it. So that's what we're gonna look at. This is a super long lesson, and it could take several days for you, so don't worry if it's taking you many days. All right, first thing I'm going to have you do is go to page 201 and 202 and do numbers 1, 2, and 5. That's right, you get to skip 3 and 4 for now. So I'm going to show you the problems, and as you're doing them, you need to think about what you should do with the remainder, and they kind of give you a hint. In number 1, they say sometimes you ignore the remainder. So they have a roll of ribbon is 1,780 inches long. It takes one yard of ribbon, which is 36 inches, to wrap a gift. Find out how many gifts can be wrapped and why do you ignore the remainder. Then you're supposed to do number two. Sometimes you round up to the next whole number. There are 247 people traveling to the, to the basketball tournament by bus. Each bus holds 52 people. How many buses will be needed? Why do you round up? And then do number five. Sometimes the remainder is the answer to the problem. A bagel shop has 138 bagels to be packed into boxes of 12 to be sold. The extra bagels are for the workers. How many bagels will the workers get? Why is the remainder the answer? Okay, complete those three and then unpause to see the answers. If you need to, do one at a time too, that's fine. And then watch my answers. So number one, a roll of ribbon is 1,780 inches long. It takes one yard of ribbon, which is 36 inches to wrap a gift. This is important. We have 1,780 inches of ribbon. We wanna divide it into one yard sections, which are 36 inches. Inches, 1,780 inches, divided into groups of inches, 36 inches. When I did my division, I got 49 with a remainder of 16. So what that tells me is how many gifts got wrapped. Well, I have 49 groups of 36, so I wrapped 49 Why do I ignore the remainder? The 16 or 16 inches left of the ribbon. I cannot wrap another gift with only 16 inches and I can't wrap part of a gift. I'm not gonna do wrap a half a gift or anything. So, oops, I gotta change this. So the remainder is 16, I tell what it does. It represents 16 inches of ribbon that are not enough to wrap the gift. So that would be a case where I just ignore those 16 inches. Have to think of what does the remainder represent. Sometimes you round up to the next whole number. There are 247 people traveling to a basketball tournament by bus. Each bus holds 52 people. So I'm gonna take the 247 people, divide them into groups of 52 for each bus. So there would be four buses. That would take 208 people, but I'd still have 39 remaining. So why do I round up? The remainder 39 represents 39 people, and those people need a whole nother bus. So I'm going to add one to the four and say that I need five buses, because it'll take five buses to take all the people. These 39 people, 
four buses won't take those 39. They're only going to take 208 people. So I need one more bus. I can't take a part of a bus. I need a whole other one more bus. Number five, sometimes the remainder is the answer to the problem. A bagel shop has 138 bagels to be packed into boxes of 12 to be sold. The extra bagels are for the workers. So I have 138 bagels that I'm going to put into boxes that have 12 bagels in each box. That meant I filled 11 boxes, but I have six left over. Oh, what does my... That six left over are of the 138 bagels that didn't fit. So that's how many bagels the workers will get. So my answer is going to be six bagels. And that's definitely going quicker than me trying to write. And why is my answer my remainder? The remainder six represents six extra bagels. It's hard for me to say bagels. The bagels that are left over after dividing 138 into groups of 12. And that's what we want. Those are the ones that the workers get. The extra are what's left over. So that is, those are some examples where we ignore the remainder. We add up because of a remainder. It says we need one more, like we needed one more whole bus. Or an example of where the remainder actually is what's left over is what our answer is. We have other cases for our remainder. Let's go back to number three. Sometimes you use a remainder to form a fraction. We have Miss Colby's class. There are 28 students in Miss Colby's class, and they're going to share 98 slices of pizza equally. So we have 98 slices of pizza divided amongst 28 students equally. They're each going to get three slices. Well, three slices for 28 people would be 84 slices. There would be 14 slices left. Well, as I look at this division, I know that I can cut these pieces in half, can't I? And they could each get a half a slice. Well, how do we do that mathematically? Well, mathematically, what I can do is say, hey, I have 14 slices left. That's how many I'm talking about is 14. It becomes my numerator. And my divisor is how many pieces I want to make it into, 28. Now, to simplify that fraction, I divide by 1 in the form of a fraction of 14 fourteenths. And it equals, I still have the three holes. 14 divided by 14 is 1. 28 divided by 14 is 2. So, they're each going to get three and one half slices. So when, why does this work? This works because the 14 is what's left of the 98. And another way to write 98 divided by 28 is as a fraction. It's 98 divided by 28. And the 14 is what's left of my numerator, 98. And the size of those pieces are still 28s. So whenever you want to make a remainder into a fraction, the remainder becomes your numerator. And your denominator 
is your divisor. Your divisor stays your denominator. So that's my explanation. Another thing to do with remainders is to make a decimal. Suppose 16 friends earned $348 at a car wash. They want to divide the money equally. The division at the right shows that each friend gets $21. $348 divided into 16 equal groups would be $21. But they still have $12 left. Dividing the 12, each friend gets an additional 12 sixteenths, don't they? 12 sixteenths. That's what we just learned a second ago in making it a fraction. 12 sixteenths can be divided evenly by 1 in the form of the fraction 4 fourths gives us 21 and three-fourths of a dollar. Now, I can say that, but I don't usually write it like that, do I? Usually money we write as a decimal. So when we're dividing and we want to make our remainder into a decimal, it's really not very difficult. Uh, 348 is the decimal number. still 348. If I attach a decimal and a zero at the end of a number, it doesn't change the value. Now, the decimal is also after the ones here. And now I just keep going and I bring down my zero and divide. How many 16s in 120? Well, 16 is close to 20. How many twos in 12? Six but I know that there's actually gonna be seven. Seven multiplied by 16 is 112. As I subtract, I still have eight tenths left. So I'm gonna take those eight dimes, change them into eight pennies by attaching a zero change them into 80 pennies, and now put those into groups of 16, which there would be 5, and I know that 5 multiplied by 16 is 80. So 5 hundredths divided multiplied by 16 would be 80 hundredths, and I have 0 left. So they're each going to get $21.75 or 21 dollars, 21 and three fourths dollars. So to make a decimal, your remainder 12 into a decimal, I just attached a decimal at the end of my quotient and my dividend, and then I could attach zeros and keep dividing until I was done. Now, they're gonna have you Try that with this one. A rectangular garden has an area of 882 square meters. Metric is usually measured in decimals. So 882 square meters. The long side of the garden has a length of 35 meters. How long is the short side? Whenever I have area, I like to draw an area, a rectangle. It's 882 square meters inside here and the length was 35 meters. I know that area equals length multiplied by width so width will equal area divided by length. Hopefully you've done this. Go ahead and do this and make a decimal. Welcome back. So when you did your division, what you should have gotten was 25. 882 divided by 35 is 25 whole meters, but we still have seven more meters 
left that can be divided by the 35. So we just, let me use a different color, attach a decimal to our divide dividend. Attach a decimal to our dividend and a zero. Attach a decimal to our quotient and now keep going. Bring down my zero. 70 tenths divided by 35 are two. Two times 35 is 70. So two tenths times 35 is 70 tenths or seven and zero tenths with nothing left over. You should have came up with 25 and two tenths meters. If I wanted to check this, I could go 25 and 2 tenths. My width multiplied by my length. And I should get my area. Now, 252 multiplied by 30. And then add my partial quotients. I have one decimal place in my factors, one decimal place in my quotient, or my product, 882. It checks out okay. I like to do that once in a while. All right. So here are some more problems to try out for real world situations. Go ahead and think of all the different things you can do with remainders. Check back in the video if you need some help with it or anything. As soon as you're done, you can see my answers. You have number six, at the Cactus Flower Cafe, all tips are divided equally among the waiters. Last night, the 16 waiters took in 1,108 in tips. How much did each waiter get? And number seven, a gardener needs to move 2,150 pounds of dirt. He can carry 98 pounds in his wheelbarrow. How many trips will he need to make with the wheelbarrow? Welcome back. Let's take a look at first number six. Kind of a trick thing here. Okay, not really. $1,108 in tips divided by 16 p. 16 waiters. Oh, these are dollars. I have four dollars left. So I can make money out into a decimal by attaching a decimal and zero to my dividend. Whoop, no, I don't need a zero in my quotient though. Just attach a decimal and a zero to my dividend because it's still one thousand one hundred eight dollars. Bring that down 40 tenths would be, what, see here, uh, 20 would be two, two 16s would be 32. So let's try two, two 16s are 32. Gives us eight tenths left. Oh, I need to attach another zero. Bring it down, 80, and I know that five 
times 16. So I end up with $69 and 25 cents. Number seven, a gardener needs to move 2,150 pounds of dirt. He can carry 98 pounds in his wheelbarrow. How many trips will he need to make with the wheelbarrow? Okay, so he had 2,150 pounds divided by 98 pounds each trip. So that gave me 21 trips, but there's still 92 left over. Well, that 92 remainder represents 92 pounds of dirt yet. <sighs> He's going to need one more wheelbarrow trip, isn't he? So 22 trips. Like I said, this is a long lesson. I'm sure you might be on it multiple days. Um, solving exercises 8 through 13 on page 203. We will discuss some of them when you're done. So number 8. I'm not going to read them for you. I'm going to save some time. There's 8 and 9. There's 10, 11, and 12. There's 13. When you've completed all of them, then restart this to get my answers. So Maya must work 133 hours during the month of May. There are 21 working days in May this year. How many hours per day will Maya work if she works the same number of hours each day? So my remainder seven represents seven hours that she still needs to work. So hours, time, well, seconds we do in decimals, but days and hours we don't, we usually do in a fraction. So seven, my remainder is my numerator. My divisor 21 is my denominator. So you could have six and seven twenty-firsts or seven and twenty-one can be divided by one in the form of the fraction seven sevenths. And that would be one third. So for my answer, I'm going to go with six and one third hours would get her to 21 hours in the week. Number nine, colored markers are 78 cents each. Pablo has $21.63 in his pocket. How many markers can Pablo buy? Well, as Pablo starts dividing these, he's going to realize, wait a minute, I want to put these into groups of 78 cents. I can't keep these in dollars. So before I even started, I made them, because I'm dividing into cents, I divided, I changed my $21.63 into 2,163 cents. So I'm dividing cents into groups of cents. And as I divided, I came up with a remainder of 57 cents, right? My remainder 57 rem represents 57 cents left over. Well, the 27 markers he could buy but he'd have 57 cents left over. Well, that's not enough to buy any more markers, so I can just ignore the 57. And my answer will be, he can buy 27, oh, 27 markers. And I'm gonna stop there, you know what I mean. All right. Number 10, 
A meat packer has 180 kilograms of ground meat. He will divide it equally into 50 packages. How much will each package weigh? So he has 180 kilograms put into 50 packages. Well, I have a remainder of 30 kilograms yet. Uh, metric measurements, I know, go to decimals. So my remainder is going to get broken into decimals. So I'm going to attach a decimal point and a zero to my dividend. I'm going to bring down that zero. I'm going to put a decimal in my quotient and say six tenths. So I end up with three and six tenths of a kilogram. 11. In volleyball, there are 12 players on a court. If 75 people all wanted to play volleyball at a gym that has more than enough courts, how many of them must sit out at one time? So they have a whole bunch, they have more than enough courts for all the people, but they're getting broken up into 12 players because six on each side, right? So as I take the 75 and divide it into 12 players, there's going to be six games going on, and but I have a remainder of three. Well, three is what's left of the 75. 75 were the people. Ah, 72 people are playing. The remainder of three are how many people aren't playing or the ones that have to sit out. So that's my answer. Three players. Yay me, I was able to type it. At the 4th of July celebration, 1,408 ounces of lemonade will be shared equally by 88 people. How many ounces of lemonade will each person get? So we have 148 ounces divided by 88 people. In this one, I didn't have a remainder. I don't know why they put this in this lesson. They each get 16 ounces with none remaining. Last one of these. Armando needs quarters to ride the bus each day. He took $14.87 to the bank and asked to have it changed into quarters. How many quarters did he get? So $14.87 put into quarters. And this is similar to earlier where, oh, quarters are 25 cents. He had some dollars. Those dollars are gonna get put into cents. So I changed them all into cents first by multiplying by 100. One or $14.87 is 1,487 cents divided by 25 cents. So he ends up getting 59 groups of 25 or 59 quarters, but he has 12 left. The remainder 12 represents 12 cents. Well, 12 cents aren't enough to get any more quarters, so I can ignore the 12 cents and just say, hey, he gets... 59 quarters. I didn't answer this one, did I? 16 ounces. All right. So another page done. What do we think Puzzle Penguin did wrong? What should we tell him? So here we go. We have our good friend, Puzzle Penguin. He says, Dear math students, I am moving and I need to pack my sardines. I have 1,700 cans of sardines and I know I can fit 48 cans into each box. I divided to figure out how many boxes I needed. I bought 35 boxes, but I had some cans left over. What did I do wrong? Your friend, Puzzle Penguin. So think about what he did wrong and write it on down. Welcome back. Um, first thing I did is I looked at it and I said, well, he divided, right? Because 1,700 divided by 48, I got three. Three times 40 is 144. Subtract to get 26. He brought down the zero. 
there's five, five groups of 48 is 240, remainder 20. So he divided, right? So if you thought he divided wrong, um, realize he divided right, and then see what mistake he made of by getting 35 boxes. So then I realized, wait a minute, he should need, he can, he needs, he has 35 groups of 48, but he has 20 remaining. That's 20 remaining of the 1,700 cans of sardines. He has, the remainder is 20 cans. He needs one more can, doesn't he? I realized, hey, he needs one more box, I'm sorry, to put in those 20 cans. He needs 36 boxes. So I told him, dear Puzzle Penguin, you forgot about the remainder. You will have 20 cans with no box. You need to add another box for your remaining cans. Now, for the last part on page 204, they say write a word problem that involves a division that has a remainder, solve your problem, and explain what you did with the remainder in your solution. All right, what I suggest you do is come up with your own problems you have to really understand how to interpret the remainder. Make a few problems with different uses for the remainder. Have someone older tell you what type of problems they want you to make. Remember what you can do with the remainder is ignore the remainder. Puzzle Penguin couldn't ignore his remainder. He didn't have enough boxes, right? The remainder is his answer. Well, he didn't need 20 boxes, right? Um, our remainder for our answer was like the players that were left over that didn't get to play volleyball. The remainder means you need to add one more to your quotient. That's what Puzzle Penguin had, didn't he? His 20 sardine boxes needed, or cans needed one more box. Use your remainder to form a decimal. That's a lot of times for money or metric measurements. And use the remainder to form a fraction. And that's sometimes days. That's things that we can break into fractions, like pieces of pizza. So go ahead and have some fun writing a bunch of your own problems. All right. Thank you for viewing this lesson.